Day by day our lives are turning Like a potter's wheel they spin You are choosing your own maker Choose your potter's wheel, my friend. Pharaoh frequently becomes a deciding factor for people on the subject of foreordination. Does God really choose individuals to be lost and others to be saved? Paul brought this up in Romans 9, 14 through 18, which says, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up, to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. Well, if he hardens whom he desires, then he must have decided he just wanted them to go to hell. For some reason, we'd rather believe God is a prejudiced God than look to see if we're really understanding the correct meaning of a text. We've already seen enough in the course of this series to have serious doubts about God being partial. But more than that, the hardening of Pharaoh's heart was not a supernatural overriding of human will on the part of God. We saw that to be the case in the video that I'll link right up here. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and clicking the notifier bell with notifications turned on. We're covering a lot of information on this, and this will help you keep from missing any of the important videos we're releasing. Now, another passage that gets brought up is Haggai 2 and verse 23, which says, On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, my servant, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. God said that he had chosen Zerubbabel, and people think that settles the whole thing. Well, wait a minute. If the salvation of God is by God choosing, and he had already chosen the nation of Israel, and Zerubbabel was of the nation of Israel, then why did God have to choose Zerubbabel? Again, this has nothing to do with whether Zerubbabel would be saved. God's choice was of him as governor of Judea to finish the temple that had been destroyed by the Babylonians. This same type of misunderstanding occurs in application of John chapter 15 and verse 16, where Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that wh whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. This is not about being chosen for salvation. Jesus chose these men as apostles. This misunderstanding doesn't surprise me. Churches use John 15, 1 through 2 to justify all the denominations. They see the branches as the various churches, which isn't even remotely in mind here. Jesus is the vine, and the apostles were the branches. The apostles were chosen to their office to do the specific work Jesus had for them to do. The great invitation of Jesus speaks volumes on this subject. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my load is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 The call in this text is qualified as being to all who are weary and heavy laden. That would be all sinners as they bear their guilt of sin. Jesus would not call all sinners if his offer was not available to all sinners. It's amazing to me that the most famous verse in Scripture can be so well known but disregarded on this subject. Jesus said in John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Who did he love? Was it just the saved world? That's what the Calvinist argues, and so he limits the atonement of Christ's blood. This great gift of God was promised to all who are weary and heavy laden. The promised seed of woman who would crush the serpent's head was not a promise to a few, but to all of her offspring. 
The love of our God was not a prejudiced love that saved only a random selection carried out by his caprice. It was a universal extension of God's grace to all who would come to his son and trust his saving grace. In our next video, we'll move on to the L in the acrostic for Calvinism and study limited atonement. Was the blood of Jesus shed for all sinners or only an elect group, specifically and individually chosen? I hope you'll join me for that study.